Hello friends, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to look into one of the questions posted on probably a community forum. Um, I think it was posted a long time ago and um, I had in my list of things to share. Um, so the question was, uh, I don't have the link to the post, I can show the question. But the question was, a um, when the item will ran out of the stock. Um, so quickly, I will show you, I created a dummy Excel file, what actually the question is. I will walk through that Excel file and then, uh, then we will look into the solution. So here it is, well, this is what the user shared uh, on Power BI Community Forum. So basically he has a transaction list, I guess it's a stock, uh, uh, I think coming in and going out. And these are the product A and B. And these are the dates. So the, the question was when the product A, the, the stock is going to run out of, uh, the, when the product A is going to run out of stock and when product B is going to get uh, ran out of stock. To, to the, the, the explanation of uh, how to answer that is, I put it on another sheet. So basically you do the running total on A. So I use the running total on A. So 10 and minus two, eight and keep on going. And then when it becomes zero, it means that is the date when it will run out of stock. Um, so the product A will run out of stock on, um, this is a June, uh, June of 10th, 2020. And similarly, uh, running total on product B. So this, this will keep on going. It never go to zero, but it go to negative two uh, on uh, 11th of June. So that it means the product B will run out of stock on uh, June 11th. So this is what we want to do. This is what users were looking for a product A and product B or uh, as a matter of fact, any other product <coughs> what date they will run out of stock. So let's get to Power BI and look at the solution. So here I am um, in Power BI and the similar thing. So we have a, a date um, and then the, the quantity which I showed you and uh, Simply we have a, in, from the data model perspective, uh, so we have a transaction date and I think this is the future transaction date. That's why he wanted to know when the, he will run out of stock. And then we have a date dimension, uh, so simple, and then the product linking to our fact table. So the first thing is what we need to do is, as we saw in an Excel sheet, we need to have a running total. Uh, so I already created that. This is nothing, nothing fancy about that. It's many times we all did that. So again, a sum of the quantity, and then we are getting the range. It should be a date here as well, but uh, uh, that's in period. So we ha we have this, and now let's uh, put this in cumulative data in here, and uh, of course it will now show. Uh, running total for each date, even there is no data. So as you can see, it's going up to uh, whatever the calendar date is. I think calendar date is up to today. So it's going forever. And uh, similarly for uh, quantity B, uh, for product B, we have the same thing. So, so this is simple stuff. Now the if we go back to Excel, what we're going to do is uh, looking at the running total and find out when uh, this running total is less than or equal to zero. And uh, so in this case, it is gonna less than or equal to zero on 10th of June. And in this case, less than or equal to uh, zero on uh, 11th June. It means that is the date it's running out of stock. Um, so to do, I'm going to remove the cumulative quantity just because otherwise this is, uh, this is no point showing that, but th th that's the a, a running running uh, total what we, what we did in uh, Excel sheet date out of stock. So what first we need to do is to find out a when we are going to, uh, when the cumulative total, the running total is going to be less than or equal to zero. To do that, what we need to do is, um, um, let's create a, a table, a running total by product and date. So what we need to do here is we need to uh, basically create a 
summarize our data. So what we are summarizing over, so we need to find the running total for each date for the product until we hit the uh, less than equal to zero. To do that, uh, what we because if, from the modeling perspective, there is no relationship between product and date, right? Uh, the fact table is in between. So what we can use, take advantage of, uh, of cross join here. What does that cross join does it? It needed table one returns a table that is a cross join of the spec specified tables. So we get the list of products, so which will be product ID and uh, then have it cross join with with the dates so basically so what we're doing is so we will get each product has a link with the date so what this will return is like number of date dates we have in our calendar table it will return that many rows so if we actually before even we do that let's see what this uh, will actually return so i'm going to return this uh, count rows running total by so first first understand what what this will do um, so before we go further uh, i already have a table here which is using product a and b id from dim product so let's uh, put this new measure in here so as you can see it's returning 1009 uh, 1096 rows why 1096 rows because if we go back to our calendar table and uh, there is 1096 rows in our calendar table. So each product has now the full join with the table and running 1096 rows. So that's uh, that's what it is happening. So now we have these rows. So what we can do is so we can summarize over this table. So what we want is we want a summarize by product ID and then also by date. So we got that. So now by product and by date. So what is the, we add a new column here. Let's call it uh, running total. And uh, the measure we already uh, written, which is cumulative quantity. Let's call it the same. So that's not confusing. Uh, confusing. Cumulative quantity, right? So what we're doing with this is, so we, we cross join, we saw one product and all the dates, and then we are grouping by product and date, and then we are getting cumulative quantity. So basically for each date, for that per product, we are getting the cumulative quantity. So now we, we have this table which is holding this, and now it is very easy from here, we can filter this table further where the stock is less than equal to zero. So let's do that. So let's call, the, uh, a out of stock date so what that is we know that when the the running total the cumulative quantity is less than equal to zero that's when that's the date what we are looking for so if we filter this table now uh, let's do actually okay so let's filter this table filter running um, total by product date where our cumulative quantity is less than or equal to zero. It means on that date, uh, so now this table will only return the rows on or before um, uh, minus zero or um, less than zero. And then we can have a min x on it, so on our table. And what we want is, so from this table, give us the date. All right, so return out of stock date. Let's see, do we get the right answer or not? Okay. So we are getting first January in both cases. Now, why that is the case, where the first January came into the picture. And the reason behind that is, uh, let me show you guys uh, to explain that. Uh, if I drop cumulative date, uh, cumulative quantity uh, again here, I'm going to remove the regular quantity column just to keep it simple. So if you look at that is the running total uh, cumulative quantity is starting from a third of June 2020 because that is the first uh, transaction for both the products in the table. Let's go back and quickly take a look. 
if you go in a fact feature transaction table the transaction start from 3rd of june it means the cumulative quantity is starting from that date onward and then it keep on going until the rest of the calendar it doesn't matter up to 2022nd so when we in our measure when we said less than equal to 0 keep in mind the blank when you are comparing the a number and then you say is equal to 0 and if you don't specify the blank it means that the blank is also uh, treated as a zero so what it is doing it's it's going a minimum quantity less than equal to zero so as we saw in our table uh, anything before third um, of jan uh, june like the our calendar st uh, start from first of january 2020 and that's why we are getting the first january 2020 it's giving because that is, it's treating that as a zero if let's say if i go back to my date uh, table and it's starting from 20 um, 1st of January if I change it and start it from 15th of January so uh, 15th of January I will see 15th here so that will prove it is giving us the minimum quantity because that's the blank on that date and uh, this uh, here you go so it's changing to 15th of January 2020 so what we need to do here is in go back to our uh, logic here and uh, it says cumulative quantity less than zero and note is blank. So we want to don't uh, include the uh, or exclude the blank as well. So now if we run, or oh, here you go. So we have a 10th of June and 11th of June. And if we go back to our Excel sheet, uh, so on Excel, so uh, product A was going ran out of stock as we can see here with the running total on a uh, 10th June and product B was going to run out of stock on 11th June. So this is what we are getting the um, the number of uh, uh, so the dates. So this is working fine, but I I I, I think um, there is a little bit further improvement we can do in this one and let me show what that is. Because I'm testing this on a very, very small data set. I don't know how it will perform in a large data set. But one thing very obvious that we can always uh, improve on this. So if you remember uh, when I when I did this cross join, it returned like number of rows in, in our date table. Let's quickly uh, do that again. So we said count rows uh, running total by and, and we were getting 1096 uh, over 1,082 now because uh, I changed the calendar table starting from 15th of January. So this is running 1,082, so it's giving all the rows going up to 2022. But we know uh, from our data, the last transaction date for, uh, if we sort it by A, uh, by, by product, sorry. And we know the last transaction date, uh, didn't I sort it? Oh, sorry, sort ascending. Um, so the last transaction date for, um, Transaction date for A is 12th of June and for B is 11th of June. So why we are, why we should not have, uh, the one way is we can take a minimum and maximum of the product and have the date, the cross join just between those dates. So that will reduce the number of rows. Let's first look at the maximum date. So what we can do is, uh, we can add another uh, variable here. We can say a last product transaction date or uh, product last transaction date. So what that would be, so we will calculate max from our fact uh, transaction table, which is date. And then we can say, don't uh, remove filter on uh, date. I don't want a fil a, any filter coming from dim date. So give me the a, a, a maximum transaction date. So if, if we just put this as a separate measure, just for the sake of testing, uh, actually I already have probably here, uh, max date, yeah, okay. So I will just show that. Um, so I have a max date here, just quickly show the measure. So, okay, here fact transaction date and dim date. So if I bring this measure into product A and B, so I will see their last transaction date. As you can see, it's 12th of June and it's 11th of June. It means there's no point having the cumulative total go all the way up to the last date in the date table. We can 
we can have that cross joint table go only up to this date. So to do that, what I can do here is I can have a, a uh, maybe put another variable var um, date. So what we can do here is calculate table and get values from our dim date date table. So that will return us a, a unique uh, date table is a unique. And then we will have here filter that dim date date is less than or equal to product last transaction date, right? So now our date table will have the start from the 15th of January. In my our case, we change like the first date in the calendar table and then up to the last transaction date of that product. So instead of going with the full date column, now I can if we go with the dates here and we're still returning count of rows, I expect the count of rows to change uh, depending on uh, when is the last transaction date. Here you go. So now instead of um, 1000 some rows, now we are 150 and 149 rows. So it's very, very small data set. I can actually, similarly, I can, the way I uh, uh, created the last transaction date, I can create the first transaction date of the product and then have it reduce it further. And uh, maybe let's quickly try that and see the number of rows, uh, what that would be. Um, so that's a lot product, last transaction date. And then here we go var product first transaction date. So that would be minimum. And now in our date table here in the check, we can say a calculate table values go dim date date is greater than or equal to product first transaction date so it's when the first transaction happened and the last one, because the cumulative total is between that particular date range we are interested in rest is is, is not uh, important so now we have only 10 rows for A and uh, nine rows for B based on the first and last transaction date. And now if we go back to our, um, uh, this out of stock, return out of stock date column uh, uh, variable, <clears throat> the result will be the same, but we removed um, the, so 10th of June and 11th of June, if this is what it was, let's go back to Excel. 10th of June and 11th of June. So we removed the data uh, by, by filtering our date table within the first and the last transaction date of the product. So our this cross joint table now return a very small number of rows, which are relevant to do this calculation. And then we are filtering that further and getting the minimum values. So uh, I think that that reducing that the result did not change whether I use the full date table or I uh, use the uh, smaller date table filtering uh, by first and last between first and last transaction date. But I think in a large data set, it will uh, it will will have a, a big performance impact. And um, uh, I guess in this particular video, we seen few things uh, like cross join how that is helpful. And also, um, you know, we, we created a, a table with the cross join, iterate over that and to get the minimum value. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it. It's it, it, This question has been asked quite a lot of time on Power BI community. I hope uh, this will answer uh, some of those uh, posts. And uh, until next video, have a good day. Uh, this is Sunday and this video will come out on Monday. I'm going to have some rest now. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, do subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you.